Hello there, my name is Tim Walter. I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. Now, I was going to record a video today about dowsers specialising in a particular area of dowsing. You know, there are all sorts of dowsers who specialise in one area rather than another. It's something that you do once you feel you've got the hang of it and gained some experience. If you allow yourself to follow your heart, then you'll find your path that is presented to you. Much of the time, inexperienced dowsers get stuck in the early stages of learning to douse simply because they don't trust their results enough. But plough on through that phase and trust your heart. Don't listen to the logic of your head. And by really being in your body, you'll move on to this next stage, which as I say, is when you get interested in one particular area of dowsing. So that's what I was going to show you, but uh, that's going to have to wait till another time. As I just came across the clip, I am going to show you now of Hamish Miller, my dear old mentor. And in this clip, he's Dowsing Auras from a DVD called Diverse Dowsing that we made together way back in 2009. So this is Hamish showing us how to douse auras and then we hear from a few professional dowsers about their areas of expertise. I hope you enjoy it and if this sort of content is for you then do click on the subscribe, click the grey bell icon to get notified every time we upload a video or do a live Q&A. So here he is then, Hamish Miller, showing us how to douse auras of people and trees. Now, one of the really delightful things about dowsing is, and it's probably the only method you can do it, but you can actually uh, measure human auras and chakras because they are just, just, they are simply biomagnetic fields which surround our bodies. Very, very subtle energies which are profoundly affected by the uh, nuances of earth energies around us and it affects our behavior quite profoundly. When we started working first, I used to do it by, by hand and I used to be able to find uh, the aura and you can do that. But when I started dowsing, I found that the aura was much further out. And you could follow it exactly as you follow the rope. You could follow the outside of somebody's aura just by following what the, the rod does. And it should be centrally balanced around the spine. I do a lot of experiments with this when we're doing teaching and get people to douse each other's aura and they find it absolutely fascinating how the, how the aura varies and the size of the chakras and the biomagnetic fields change. I'm inside your heart chakra just now and the easiest way is, is to be inside it and say, show me, as you said, show me the rope, show me the heart chakra. Yeah, it's out here. Heart chakras are very big, and if you're, you're doing a heart chakra, it takes you through the walls and out the windows and over the furniture. So dowsers being a lazy crowd, they say, show me the heart chakra a third of its size. That's the thing about dowsing, there's no end to the things you can do when you ask the right questions. So that saves you climbing around the furniture. Yeah. And what you're trying to do is find out if there are any lumps out of the heart chakra. Every living being has an aura, and particularly with trees, you can work with trees and they actually react to our consciousness. So in the classes, what I like to do is ask the pupils, if you like, to select a tree that attracts them and just go up to it and acknowledge it. And then douse its aura, because every tree has an aura and, and they, they are all different sizes. And I ask them to douse it first, before they, they start working with the tree at all, just douse where the aura is. And mark the outside edge of it. And that indicates where the outside edge is, just about there. So if I mark that with a stick, and then I ask them to go and, and hug the tree, but, uh, consciously say to it, you are beautiful. And let the tree know that you, you, you think it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a wonderful piece of, of, of natural being that you have a great rapport with and you can hug it and you can love it and really communicate with it. Now the tree responds to the sincerity of your communication. It knows whether you're paying lip service in this hug or not. So you go out and you douse it again and see if its aura has changed. And yes, it has. The outside edge of this aura is now coming out here. It was there. So you can see that's almost a third bigger. So the tree has responded to a conscious acknowledgement of it, a, a, a declaration that you think it's beautiful. And there are four items that really are important to become a good dowser. The first one is practice. The second one is practice. 
The third one is practice. And even if you begin to doubt your ability to do it, more practice. You can do general dowsing and that's fine, it's very satisfying. But if you really want to get into dowsing in a way that is, is really valid, then you have to become a specialist in some particular subject that, that interests you. It can be archaeology, it can be earth energy, it can be healing, it can be allergies, it can be anything. Because the big thing about dowsing is, is that there are no limitations. I don't know how map dowsing, dowsing started for me. Um, I remember very early on, somebody asked me if I could find a little kitten who had gone off. And I'm not sure what skill I used, to be honest. I thought about where it was and I drew a little sketch of the area. And yet I tuned into the kitten in a different sort of way and found her. When I'm dowsing for diets and things, particular food jump out at me on a page without me having to douse. I was told that that would happen and the more dowsing you do, the more it heightens this intuition. You know automatically when you do it, you have a, an innate sense of whether you're going to find them or not. They say dowsing, but you become a water diviner. There are so many other things which would be detected by divining. We're trying to eliminate force lines, energy lines, energy centres and come back to the water. I find the most valuable part is getting to the map, establishing the link between the animal's home or wherever we're starting from, and establishing that link in my mind and letting the pendulum take me then. Archaeologists are not very um, pro-dowsing unless they've experienced it themselves. Around the country there are dowsers who are working with archaeology groups and with the National Trust and various organisations and they are getting their dowsing surveys validated. Mm -hmm.